talked about a topic that I think is of interest to uh, everyone in this room. Uh, Jonathan Medved is an investor and serial entrepreneur. He has invested in over 100 startup companies, helping 12 of them to get to valuations in excess of $100 million. Mr. Medved was the co-founder and until recently the CEO of Bringo, a leader in mobile social applications, which went public on the NASDAQ in June 2010. Prior to Bringo, he was a founder and general partner of Israel Seed Partners, a $260 million Israeli venture capital fund. He has served as a director on the board of several portfolio companies that are now publicly traded uh, on the NASDAQ or were acquired by companies that are publicly traded on the NASDAQ. More recently, Mr. Medved is the founder and CEO of Our Crowd, a new crowdfunding equity platform for accredited investors and according to Forbes, one of the largest crowdfunding organizations on the planet having raised over $34 million for 33 portfolio companies. He is here to speak with us to this evening about equity crowdfunding and the new platform that he has created. Um, we've all heard of Kickstarter and that uh, you've all been exposed at least initially to this whole area of crowdfunding. Uh, it's time to catch up with the times because crowdfunding is about to go uh, to a new level. And uh, you're going to hear a little bit about that tonight in terms of um, what Mr. Medved is doing to promote crowdfunding, creating opportunities for the next generation of entrepreneurs. So it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. John Medved. This is a good audience. Okay, I'm, I'm excited and I'm up, uh, even though I'm, I'm on the third day after a, a 14 and a half hour flight from Tel Aviv to Los Angeles, road shows, and tomorrow morning I'm looking at a 4 a.m. departure up to Silicon Valley, but to get a crowd like this and uh, sort of just look at this uh, incredible Aztec audience is sort of cool. For me, this is a coming home. I was born in San Diego, uh, up at, uh, a little bit up the road at Sharp Memorial Hospital. My late father, who I'd like to actually uh, dedicate these comments to was a professor here at SDSU, uh, taught physics back in the day, he was a scientist astronaut, and so San Diego has always been very, very close to my heart. Um, about 32 years ago, I moved to Israel, and uh, I've made my life there in what's now become known as Startup Nation, and uh, uh, it's been a fun place to actually build startups and to do new things, and uh, now, you know, I'm trying to essentially uh, graduate into more of a global player. I mean, all of our companies are always global. I mean, Israeli companies could care less about the local market. We're always going global. But this platform, which I've built, is now emerging as, as probably the leading platform for uh, global uh, uh, equity crowdfunding. So if I can get this little slide clicker, we'll take it away. So how many of you have uh, visited Kickstarter? Okay, the one, few people who haven't got to get to Kickstarter. How many of you have actually supported a project on Kickstarter? Good for you. Crowdfunding is just this crazy, wild idea that somehow, by the wisdom of the crowd, you can do things you could never do before. And you guys all know the story about how do you decide how many jelly, jelly beans are in the the jar or the weight of a cow. These are very famous sort of TED talks. If you go to Google and just Google up, you know, the weight of a cow, TED, okay, you'll see that it's, it's wild. They put a big cow on stage and you get a bunch of people like you in an audience and something which I could never do as an individual or you could never do as an individual, all of a sudden as a group, we're able to actually accomplish this and get like scary accurate predictions of how much this cow weighs, okay, or how many jelly beans. Have I mean, you ever tried to figure out how many jelly beans are in a jar? It's impossible. I can't do it, but a crowd can do it. So what crowdfunding has essentially emerged to is to try to 
take that crowdsourcing, which is the more general term, and bring it to the world of finance. Today, the crowdfunding market last year, 2013, was about $5 billion. That's real money, right? In other words, we're not talking about something which is a, a nascent phenomenon, even though it's brand new, and most people still aren't involved in it. $5 billion is real. Now, if you look at how the market breaks down, there are four buckets, if you will, in the crowdfunding market. Bucket number one is what's called peer-to-peer -peer lending, okay, which basically means that you're lending money to this lady over here, okay, over the web. Now, you'd think, it sounds like a really cool idea, but until companies like Lending Club and Prosper came around and suggested this, nobody was doing it. I know this area pretty closely because back about six years ago, a friend of mine called me up and said, there's this Frenchman, Renal Laplanche, who's going around New York saying he's going to start lending money to people without a bank. And I thought that was a really cool idea. And I did what I often do is I said, hey, can I invest some money as an angel? An angel investor is somebody who directly puts his own money you know, into a company. And so I got lucky into this company. The Lending Club, if you haven't heard, is on a tear. Okay? Uh, their most recent round of finance reported, I have no inside knowledge here, was over $2 billion of value. So I've been a very lucky angel. Uh, the angels up above have been smiling on my angel investment. Um, but they're lending hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars every quarter. Um, that bucket alone is, is already billions of dollars in terms of the peer-to-peer -peer lending. The second bucket is what we call reward-based or uh, the Kickstarter kind of, of crowdfunding. And you know how that works, basically, right? You're a bad singer. You can never get a recording contract. You make a stupid YouTube of yourself. You put it up there. You strum a couple of you know, uh, chords out of key, and you say, send me $5,000 so I can fulfill my dream. Who'd believe that people would do this? But they do. Okay, and I was watching this and like just I couldn't believe it because I'm, I'm into the web and I'm into these phenomena. And when I became a real believer was when that school bus mom, I don't remember that YouTube about this very unpleasant woman who had this encounter with her kids on the school bus and they were torturing her and teasing her. And she went ahead and said, okay, you know what? I'm going to have the last laugh. And she went ahead and posted this nasty video, which had gone viral on YouTube with like 20 million views. She posted it, I think it was on Indiegogo, and said, look how these kids have ruined my life. Okay, they've tortured me. Please send me your money so I can go on vacation because I need to recover from this, you know, <laughs> human suffering. Well, $800,000 later, she went on one hell of a vacation, okay? <laughs> And, and, and you start to look at this and you say, whoa, there's something. Now, either this is the wisdom or the foolishness of the crowd. It depends on your you know, perspective. Then there are things such as you know, uh, uh, the donation sites, okay, where charities are, and good things are happening, or people are donating, coming together over the web. And then finally, there's the fourth bucket, which is the equity crowdfunding bucket, which means get a piece of a company okay, by putting essentially your money to work on one of these portals or sites. Now, let me again make sure that everyone understands the difference between what happens with a company on Kickstarter who's trying to pre-sell their product or a company on one of the equity crowdfunding sites. So Ouya, I don't know if any of you, how many have heard of Ouya? Okay, so Ouya is a Android game controller. And these guys went to, uh, you know, you might have heard of Pebble. Have you guys heard of Pebble? Pebble is the, you know, the cool watch for you know, iPhone or Android. So these companies essentially went to Kickstarter and said, hey, we don't have to raise money from venture capitalists or from angels. We can get the crowd to support our cool idea. And what they did is they put up the short video, they put up a couple of paragraphs, and then they offer a reward. And the reward in this case is an early version of their product. And if you're willing to support them, They'll sell you the product for half price. And the, mir the miraculous thing is that millions of dollars flow. Like Ouya raised $8 million. Pebble raised, I think it was $10 million bucks, if I'm not mistaken. So 
all of a sudden these guys are not just raising money for their company, but they're energizing a future crowd of customers, and they've done the whole thing without giving up a single percentage of their equity. They still own 100% of their company, and they just got funded. Doesn't get better than that. Now, the problem is what happens if you have a medical device or you have a really cool security algorithm? It's hard to crowdfund that by pre-selling the product, right? In other words, it's easy to crowdfund something which is a consumer product. I want a cool watch. I want a game controller. There's this new Israeli project, which is literally a uh, Android-powered motorized paper airplane, which just raised a million bucks, you know. Uh, so those things work, but the, the real, I don't say real, but let's call them the non-consumer gadgety sort of sexy things, they need something else. So they come to what's called equity crowdfunding. The problem, however, is that the moment you're actually selling shares in a company, right? In other words, I want to say, okay, here, I've got a new company. I'd like you to all you know, get the chance to you know, buy $50 or $100 of it, and you know, I'll sell stock. What does that sound like? A stock market, okay? It's regulated. You're breaking the law if you start to sell shares in a company to the public without having what's called a prospectus, okay, which is a defined disclosure document which is reviewed by the wonderful Securities and Exchange Commission, which protects investors, okay, as well as them being registered for trade on a recognized stock exchange. So it turns out that in April uh, 2012, the US government passed legislation to basically legalize crowdfunding for equity for shares. And that was something called the Jobs Act, which wasn't named after Steve Jobs. It stands for Jumpstart Our Business Startups. The problem is that passing legislation is easy. How do you actually write the regulations so that you know exactly what to do is really hard. And they dumped it in the lap of the SEC. Of the SEC. They've been sitting with it. They just came out with proposed regulations several months ago. They asked for comment. By the way, their proposed regulations were 540 pages. Makes really great bedtime reading. Puts you right to sleep, okay, or scare you. Um, and that's been part of it. But there's another part of it, which, and, and by the way, that when, once those are implemented, and you should expect that kind of crowdfunding to actually start happening, uh, in my opinion, sometime in the second half of this year, um, then everybody can get into it then literally you will be able to look at a project and be able to put 50 or $100, their limitations on how much you can put of your total income. So they want to protect you from putting more than 5% or 10% of your income so people aren't you know, just investing in startups like crazy. And they're going to be heavily regulated, right? The government's going to step in and make sure that the guys who are offering this stuff are not offering you know, Bernie Madoff Jr., kind of, you know, terrible fraud. Because, the, you know, with all due respect, you look at, you know, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, it's not like there's a lot of due diligence on the singer or on the school bus mom. It's basically, whatever goes, goes. And that's, you know, okay, if you're sending 50 bucks for a, uh, a t-shirt, I get it. But if you're actually selling stock, it's very, very problematic. But there's another part of this equation which has said, okay, you know what, maybe, we can do this for a different audience, a much more selective audience, which are called accredited investors. How many of you know what an accredited investor is? Okay, not, not too bad. So for the rest of you who didn't raise your hand, I'll explain this. There's a, uh, an exemption in all of these security laws, a famous one called Reg D, okay, which basically allows private companies to raise money without going public. Sort of a good idea, right? Because if you ever want to get public, you've got to raise some money to get bigger so you can actually file a prospectus and get on the stock exchange. Not everybody gets to get on the stock exchange. So you've got to allow that to happen. But the way the laws are written, they're written in such a way that you basically have to know the person, right? You, you know, if, if you know your friends and your family, you can raise money for your project. But you're not allowed to, at least you weren't allowed until just very recently, 
to go out to the public and do what's called public solicitation. Because then you're selling stock. But you are allowed to raise money from what are called accredited investors, i.e. rich people. People who have real money, the attitude is, okay, these guys are not fools, or most of them aren't, okay, and they're big boys and big girls enough to protect themselves. So the classification was made by the legislation that you have to have a million dollars of net worth outside of your house or make $200,000 a year of annual income for the last two years. So that's you know, not the 1%, but call it the 3 or the 5%. Okay? That's a pretty rarefied group. A lot of households, by the way, in America, they estimate somewhere between 8 and 10 million households have that kind of wealth in the country. And those people are allowed to make these private investments without government regulation. So there are people like our crowd and our competitors who stepped in and said, wait a minute, okay, so the, the government is working on the broad base to allow everybody to get into it, to put $50 or $100. But in the meantime, we can work legally in this area through what are called accredited investor crowdfunding portals. And that's what I've done. So I don't know if that's a, a complicated, horrifically long-winded description, but that's what it is. So the economy of crowdfunding is ready to pop. Let's hope it's popping in the positive sense. Everybody is getting into it. There's a ton of money flowing. That $5 billion we talked about is supposed to grow this year by 100% to be over a $10 billion market this year. And there's no signs of it you know, slowing down. I mean, there's probably going to be, in my opinion, in a couple of years from now, you know, 20, 30, 40 billion dollars being plowed into crowdfunding everything. So it's really the next big gold rush and the next big thing. Um, this is how we compete with our other competitors. We're, we're doing really well at, at our crowd. We basically, these numbers are out of date. We've already raised about 34 million dollars for actually 32 companies in our portfolio so far. We're raising real sums of money, okay? In other words, there's literally uh, millions of dollars being invested in our companies. The biggest round we've done has been a little over $2 million. I think we're up to 12 rounds now that have done over a million dollars each. So it's no longer just a $5,000 thing for a bad singer, but we can actually raise money for investments for companies through this accredited investor equity crowdfunding. We have a great team. We have 4,000 accredited investors now worldwide who've signed up. We have 53 countries represented. I've got crowdfunders from Bulgaria and from China and from uh, the United States and all over Latin America. Everybody's coming because basically because now the web allows you to do this in a global way. And of course, you know, we're headquartered in Israel. Um, so what we're trying to do, and I, I, I can't speak for the others, but I can tell you a little bit about my experience is we're trying to, to merge the best of angel investing and venture capital. Now, let me first define these terms. You guys know what a venture capital fund is? I mean, you might have all seen this. How many people have seen The Social Network? Come on, everybody's seen it. Yeah, great movie. And you also probably seen Jobs, right? The biography of Steve Jobs. So both of these movies, venture capitalists loom large. Okay, and they're part of our scene today. What a venture capital fund is, is a pool of capital usually raised from banks or pension funds or insurance companies. It can be small, it can be 20 million, it can be 100 million, it could be 500 million or even a billion dollars. And then you give it to professionals who manage this money, they were the guys who actually raised it, and then they see deal flow, right? They see people who come with them, entrepreneurs with ideas, and they make decisions to give these entrepreneurs money. And as you know, in the, in the entrepreneurial sort of uh, uh, quest, the first round of funding is called seed capital, like you're a seedling, and then that goes to what's called Series A or Series B, which are the, the follow-on rounds up to Series C and Series D, and then hopefully either at some point the company's bought or goes public or most often dies. Okay, in other words, you guys know that the vast majority of startup companies will die. Okay, I don't want to be, you know, uh, a meanie or you know, sort of rain on your parade, but you know, get with it. Okay, you know, man and woman up. 
okay? This is about taking risk and often failing and then trying again, okay? Failure is okay, okay? It's part of the game. Anybody who, who thinks you can win 100% of the time is full of poop, okay? It doesn't happen, right? You know, the best batters, okay, who get up and bat in the American or the National Leagues, what is an average, right? 300% hitting, you know, batting average? 350 is like you're like the, the MVP of the year. Okay, that means you're getting a hit one out of three times at bat. You're striking out, you're getting called out. That's what entrepreneurship is. Okay, th there are only crazy successful people who win every time. But the trick is to be essentially beyond fear. No fear, like those bumper stickers you see. Okay, because what's the worst thing that's gonna happen to you? You fail, big deal. Okay, get over it. Okay, it's part of life. And in fact, one of the interesting things about venture capital is that these two guys are pitching me, and this guy with the cool hair, okay, has failed, okay? He basically tried before, he lost the guy's money, he failed, and this guy, earnest guy, is trying for the first time. So who do you invest in? Let's say they got the same kind of company, same equal good deal. You stay away from the loser, right? Wrong. Historically, statistically, the guy with the cool hair is gonna outperform <laughs> the first guy, okay? Every time. Because he's got the experience, that's the way it works. Okay, that failure is okay. Actually, in my country, um, two weeks ago, we had the first ever conference called FailCon. It was a whole conference about failure and about how failure's okay. I mean, look, we don't encourage failure, right? I prefer you win. Okay, if this guy is in my office and he actually has tried to build a company and succeeded, always invest in him. Because statistically, his odds are much better than even the guy with the cool hair, okay? <laughs> so the, the reality is that um, part of this process is just having the daring and the courage to say, you know what, I'm gonna take risk. Okay, life is really short. Okay, I can tell you that, you guys probably think it lasts forever. I did when I was your age. Okay, I mean, you know, whether it's all the wild things you do and jumping off of second floors into swimming pools or, you know, imbibing large quantities of inebriants and things like that. You know, that's what you do when you're young, right? Because you don't think that it ever comes to an end and there's any limits, right? There are no limits. The reality is, talking to you now as a guy approaching 60, okay, is that it goes really fast. But therefore, to be afraid and not to take these chances and not to take risk is stupid. Taking, no, you should, you know, try to moderate the risk a little bit, okay, and not do crazy stuff. But certainly in the business area, having the guts and the courage, you know, the cojones, okay, we're here in uh, Southern California after all, okay, uh, to, to go for it is, 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 a, is, a, is a smart thing. So that's what venture capital does. They take these risks, they take huge risks, they invest money, they lose a lot of it, but when you win, you win big time. Okay, the win is not like I doubled my money. Who cares? And it's not even I made three or four times my money. Who cares? It's typically I made 50 times my money. I made 100 times my money. I made 1,000 times my money. The guys, for example, the story, you guys all know the story of Google, that when they went out to raise their money and these guys were uh, essentially uh, dropouts, you know, out of Stanford, they went to Silicon Valley with this cool search technology and uh, they saw a bunch of venture guys, and most of the venture guys were really excited about Google, but when it came time to talking about what the terms were gonna be, they said, yeah, you know, give us 10 million bucks and you can buy 10% of the company, which means that's a $100 million valuation. And these guys had, you know, what, they were sitting in a trailer, right? They had not a lot, and there were a lot of venture capitalists, I know some of them, who threw them out of their frickin' offices, said, are you guys nuts? Okay, this thing is worth a hundred million dollars? You cry, what do you have? You're a bunch of dropouts. And there were a couple of guys, two very smart funds, who said, yeah, we'll pay the $10 million for 10%. Not a bad deal when you look at Google's market cap. Who saw it recently? The 300 billion, 400 billion, I can't even keep track. Okay, so do the arithmetic. That's not a hundred times your money. It's much, much more. And when you can do that on you know, $10 million, it's incredible. That's what venture capital is about taking these huge risks on 
really smart people who are going to change the world. And losing along the way, but making big. Now, angel investing is doing the same thing, but doing it as an individual. Okay? And usually it happens earlier, before the venture capital guys get in. It's like, you've got a great idea, you need to raise $50,000 or $100,000 or $200,000 because you're going to need to buy equipment, you need to hire a couple other people. So that's usually too small for a venture capital fund to get involved, right? That's something where you've got to go to friends and family or find a business angel. And today, there's this huge explosion of what are called accelerators. I don't know if you guys know about Y Combinator and Techstars and all. You know, they used to be called incubators. But incubators have a pejorative connotation. That sort of implies sick babies. And these aren't sick babies. These are really healthy, accelerating babies, okay, that are growing fast. So what happens in these accelerators is you go, they sprinkle their pixie dust, they teach you, you get mentored, and then you get to the demo day, right, which is the cool part of the thing after three months of being trained. And then there are a bunch of hungry angels who will hit you and hopefully, if you're lucky, give you that initial money. But angel investors can put in 25 grand or 50 grand or 100 grand. So those are the two primary poles of how startups get funded, is either venture capital, which is usually the second phase, and angels, which is usually the first phase. So what we've done at our crowd is tried to actually bridge the good parts of both of these investment groups. What's cool about being an angel is you're totally free to do whatever you want to. Right? I sit down with a guy with the cool hair, and I fall in love, man. I think this is incredible. What a deal. And literally, you know, it's my money. After an hour of discussion, I can hand you a half a million bucks if I have the money, if I'm so inclined. Venture guys don't work that way. Okay, it's very rare to see a venture capital person just hand over money. Angels do this stuff. Okay, you're free. You choose a deal. Now, as an investor, right, if you're like a wealthy person and you're trying to decide, you know, how to deploy your money, you can go to a venture capital fund and join one of these funds as an investor, but you've got to write a big check, right? In other words, first of all, if you want to get into the really cool funds like Kleiner Perkins or Sequoia, forget about it. It's not happening. I don't care if you have $10 million or $50 million or $100 million in your bank account. You can't buy your way into these funds. They are closed. Okay, they're done. They don't need your money. Okay, you're, you've lost out. You've got to go build your own. Okay, but what you can do is be an angel. So the problem, though, with angel investing is that you're lonely, right? You've got to go get a bunch of people together and get them to sort of fund together the company. Somebody's got to do what's called due diligence, which is to check up and make sure the guy with the good hair actually is not a criminal on the run from the o o Iowa State Police. Okay, how do we know? He's got great hair, but he could be a complete crook. Okay, we'd have no clue. But that's what there are background check companies are. You do this. You also, you know, he's talking about some cool technology in big data and analytics. What do you know about that? So you bring in experts and you do the diligence. So professionals, venture capital funds do that really well. Angels do it much less well, unless they have specific expertise in that area. So what if you could create for the crowd a combo deal where on the one hand you actually had professionals selecting the deals, checking the guy out, looking at the technology, doing the IP vetting, all this stuff, and at the same time you gave the investor discretion and choice where he can fall in love, where he finds a cool deal. And that's what we did at our crowd basically, is we've created a platform where individuals can come they have to be accredited, so you have to have some bucks, or your parents have to have bucks. And then you get to choose the deal you would like and invest. Now, the minimum investment's $10,000, so it's not the 50 bucks or the 100 bucks. But you now have the ability on our platform to actually choose the investments you would like and to get in early, hopefully in the next big deal. So what happened in October is that the SEC released their draft regulations for this broad-based crowdfunding, which is what I am not doing. Okay, and you will get a chance with some other companies, not mine, okay, as of probably June or August, somewhat time in the, th I would guess, in the third quarter, there'll be operational portals that'll say, hey, we've got cool companies, and you guys, the broad masses, can get in and start investing. 
There are lots of restrictions. These companies cannot raise more than a million dollars, by the way, according to the legislation. And I think that's sort of a bummer, because if the guy with the cool hair is running fast, he needs more than a million bucks, okay? And I, I, but, but this is gonna happen. Um, our positioning is about differentiation, right? We were just described in the street.com as crowdfunding for real investors. Somebody said we're Kickstarter for millionaires. You know, I don't know. Um, we select every deal that we put up. We curate it like a, like a museum. So you just can't come and put your stuff up on my site. We actually go and look for the best deals we can find. We typically select one or two percent of all the deals we're pitched. We co-invest with the crowd. So if we like a deal so much that we put it up, we put our money in it. And I would, by the way, in general, never buy an investment from somebody who doesn't have skin in the game, right? If someone's not willing to put the money where their mouth is, then I'd be suspicious. So we, we do put our, our money to work. It's accredited investors only. And it's, by the way, our whole platform is really good for the companies because when you're an angel investor and you have to go get your buddies to go invest in a company, all of a sudden the company now has 10 investors, individuals. And the next round, when you want to go raise Series B or Series C, you got to chase all these people down for signatures and stuff. I've literally had to go chase investors off on Alaskan cruises by sat phone saying, if you don't sign tomorrow, we're dead. The company's dying. And the guy's out there salmon fishing or something, and you got to go track the, the person down and beg for them to, to sign off so you can keep the company alive. We're international companies. Uh, the investors are coming, actually, 53 com countries are the accredited ones. We have 21 now who've actually pulled the trigger. And we're taking board seats, and we're working on something called crowd building, which we like to think is sort of unique. And that is that it's not just 50 or 100 investors with money investing in a company through us in a managed uh, partnership, but we're actually harnessing the power of the crowd to help the company grow. Because what happens is this guy finally gets the million dollars. We, we invested in Mr. Hare, okay? And we like him, he's a great guy. We just organized, put all money in, you guys, 50 of you came and joined us. Are we done? No way! It's the first inning of a, like, um, you know, uh, uh, extra innings game. What does he need? Money only? No way. He needs introductions to IBM or to Google. He needs resellers in Thailand. He needs to hire a new VP of marketing. He needs to get some help on intellectual property from a good lawyer. He needs an introduction to CNN. Okay, and most importantly, he needs an introduction to the next round of funding because we just did Series B and he's already smartly thinking of how I'm going to keep this ship growing and get Series C. So if you think crowdfunding or any investing is just about dumping money in his hands, then you're what we call <laughs> dumb money. Big distinction in our business between smart money and dumb money. And in my opinion, the biggest part of that distinction is that dumb money says, I made the investment, I'm going to pray and you know, via con Dio, see you at the exit. <coughs> Crap, <laughs> okay, that's just not the way it works. Okay, you gotta get to work, you gotta help him. You gotta sit on his board, you gotta give guidance, mentoring. It's all about that building. So what we do is, in a, in a good venture fund, by the way, you have a, a partner who helps you and the partnership helps you, but there's like one guy or three guys, and by the way, it's mostly guys, it's terrible. Uh, uh, representation of women, by the way, in venture capital. Less than like 10% of all the venture partners in, the, in Silicon Valley are women. So those women who are here, go become a venture partner, please. Fix our, our industry. Um, but the reality is that it's typically one or two guys who are helping you. What we're doing is we're trying to engage the whole crowd. We're trying to say, okay, who do we know? Somebody here knows IBM. Somebody here knows of somebody at CNN. Somebody here knows that somebody wants to put money into this company. And that's sort of unique, because now you're not just harnessing the crowd to actually give him money, but you're harnessing the crowd to actually help build the company. So we call it crowd building. Structurally, I don't know if you want to get into this. This is complicated. But basically, you know, we control a whole business here which has a, a limited partnership, okay? which is a you know, structure whereby everybody shares the upside and the risks. And the investors come in, invest together with our own 
investment vehicle, and then that money goes into a single portfolio company. And it's a pretty similar structure to a venture capital partnership, except the difference is in a regular venture capital partnership, the partnership is investing in multiple portfolio companies. And because we are a crowdfunding organization, we give people the ability to choose a specific partnership which they can invest in. And the way you join our crowd, if you're so inclined, you're certainly welcome to visit our site, even if you're not accredited, okay, and see what we're doing. But it, you won't see much, because we don't put his sort of private stuff up for everybody to see, because he wouldn't like that, right? If, you know, he's shared with us his business plan and his pipeline and his strategy. He'll agree to share it with our accredited investors who wants their money. But if for every, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry who wants to come on the web, not a good idea. So you have to go with credit on our site. You say that you have the uh, you know, capability. We actually check you out. Believe it or not, we use LinkedIn and all kinds of other you know, tools to make sure that you are. Some people actually try to accredit with Daffy Duck and uh, you know, Mickey Mouse, and they think, like, who do they think we are? Okay, they can game us that simple? I mean, come on, they, they got to think of at least a better you know, fake name okay, to try to get into my site. Um, but the reality is I'm not asking you to try to do that. Uh, the, <laughs> Then you get to look and you get to check out all the companies. You get to review our diligence. And we actually put a version of our diligence up on the site. We call it our takes, which is basically why we think that makes a good investment. And then you get to actually push a button. And you get to say, I'm investing for like 10000 on up. And I remember the first time an investor who we didn't know came to our site. And we can track them, right? In other words, we know what they're doing on the web, spent seven minutes on the site, four minutes looking at a specific company, went to the invest button, pushed and said, I'm in for 50 grand, $50,000. And we you know, saw this and, the, and, the, and we said, total joke. This guy's you know, scamming the system. It's not true, it's not happening. We send the documents, they get signed back. The money shows up a couple days later. And we said, oh, this thing works, okay? This is the wonderful world of the web. It's a whole different ball game. And now we're you know, $34 million later with people pushing the button, and this thing indeed does work. Um, and then you get to track your holdings and engage with us in the crowd building. Um, I've got a great team. It's all about the team. And by the way, we do have a bunch of women. Okay? Um, I have three women partners, which is important. And uh, you know, it's about people who have experience both in venture capital and in technology and in web businesses, and we're, we're doing good stuff. We also have a bunch of mentors who are people who are helping our companies grow. So we've got a guy like Dove Rubin who co-founded NDS, which was sold to Cisco for $5 billion. Or Mike Berman, who ran a multi-billion dollar division of uh, Boston Scientific, their whole cardiology division. They get assigned to help the gentleman with the hair. Okay? And they keep him honest, and they sit on his board, and they give him advice, and it works. Um, when we look for deals, we look for six key investment criteria. This is what it takes if any of you have startups that want to get on our site. And by the way, we started off doing primarily Israeli companies. We're now doing companies from around the world. We'll be doing our first deal here in San Diego, hopefully before the end of the month. We're a couple of days away from signing documents on it. And we're looking forward to doing more deals in San Diego. It's a great, great technology hub. And it makes me feel good. Um, we look for teams, OK? Guys who actually have been there and succeeded. Okay? We have a very strong preference for serial entrepreneurs, people who've been there, done that, made money for their investors. That makes it easier for us to get our hands around the deal. We look for huge markets. If you're addressing a market which is small and niche, not interested, boring, gong it. Okay? It just doesn't work. It better be a billion dollar market or you're not going to get our attention. We're looking for things that have an easy to understand value proposition. Something that you can convey over the web and make an easy pitch. Okay, if it's too complicated, it might make a good investment, but it's not going to make a good equity crowdfunding deal. We look for companies that have traction. Traction sounds like a Jeep going up a hill. Well, it is, because this is a big hill. You got to go up over the first one, then you got to go over a bigger hill and a bigger hill. And we want to see that you're not just sitting there waiting. I mean, I've had in my past people who come to me and say, I got this great idea. They show you this incredible PowerPoint, and then you drill down, they said, well, have you hired anybody? No. Do you have any investors? No. Have you built the product? No. Um, and you want me to risk my money? Yes. 
have you quit your job? No, because like, get out of here. What are you wasting my time for? Okay, if you're not willing to take the risk, if you haven't been successful in getting other people to believe in your vision and join you, if you haven't found already an original customer and showed that this ship is starting to sail, then go find some other sucker, okay? Not me. Um, ultimately, sponsorship is critical. I'm looking for companies, and these are companies, not ideas, where people have got already other angel investors behind them, other funds behind them, where, you know, because this is a group sport, okay? This is not something you want to take a risk on by yourself. So we look for sponsorship, and then I can't help it, I like deals, okay? You know, I'm sort of genetically predisposed to liking deals. Um, this is uh, our startup portfolio, a bunch of really cool companies. The ones with the, the dark blue lines are companies that were formed by serial entrepreneurs. So about half, maybe 40% of our deal flow have already been companies that people have already had a successful track record. And now maybe I'll spend a few minutes talking about some of these companies. So we've invested in a company called Argo, which is wild. And you can Google these things and find them either on my site or on the, the web. Uh, Amit Gopher was a brilliant engineer who 16 years ago had a terrible accident and became a, a quadriplegic, okay? Completely confined to a wheelchair. And he devoted his life after he sold his first company to essentially allowing paraplegics and quadriplegics to walk again. And so they've, he's made a product called Rewalk, which looks like sort of like a mini Iron Man. It's an exoskeleton. You put it on and a paraplegic stands up out of the chair and starts to walk. They walk so well that one of their customers just finished the London Marathon. So that's pretty good walking. Um, 26 miles last time I checked. And uh, we invested there together with uh, four other venture funds. Now the big Japanese giant Yasakawa has invested with us. Bob Rosenschein, he's basically reinventing uh, many, how many of you guys have ever used Answers.com? Okay, founder of Answers.com. Okay, went public, before that founder of Accent Software. And now he's really recreating the way that information is displayed. You can go see his products working live on USA Today. Uh, Jeff Pulver, who looks a lot skinnier now, um, just lost 100 pounds, what's wrong with me? Uh, but in any event, uh, Jeff is an unbelievable guy, was the first investor at Twitter, and uh, he's teamed up with Jake Nerdavid, who built a $2 billion company to basically build a WhatsApp for business, okay? Because today, businesses are employing guys like you. And what do you guys and gals like you do? You use WhatsApp, okay? So, you know, what do you use for business? dumb, boring, stupid applications that don't work. So these guys are, 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 are really killing it with something called Zula. Hikon is Benny Landa, who's probably one of Israel's leading entrepreneurs. He sold his company Indigo, which was the founder of digital printing, to HP for $800 million. And now he's invented, together with his team, a new company which is building digital packaging. It's a combination of 3D printing and laser cutting so that instead of using what's called a die cut, you ever seen those like, okay, when you go to a market and you get a box with cereal or cookies in it or whatnot, that box, you ever ask how that box got made and cut? Literally, they take a big piece of plywood and they take a mallet and they take little pieces of metal and they hammer the, the metal into the big piece of plywood and then they run the cardboard through it. It takes weeks to build this crazy plywood. There are seven million of them built worldwide every year. And if you want to change the package even a bit, you got to throw the plywood out and start all over again. So this is all digital. It takes 15 minutes to set it up and you can basically create digital packaging. So it's really, you know, wildly cool. Um, we've got a company called Native Flow, which uh, uh, first of all, Avi and uh, Aton have sold already three companies. They're solving the problem of what's called bring your own device which is that today everybody in the enterprise and the big business wants to use their iPhone. And, and the company, though, wants to protect their data. So it's a combination of giving accessibility and protection at the same time. Uh, Svi Schreiber has actually sold three companies before. Uh, his best company, Tradium, was sold for $450 million. And he's now doing, done a new one called Freydos, which is revolutionizing an industry which terribly needs 
you know, fixing, which is the freight forwarding business. If you ever tried to actually move freight around the world like a pallet of something, get ready for like a horrific experience. This fixes it. Abe's Market, that's a company which all of you should go check out. If I have to make one shameless pitch, go to Abe's, okay? If any of you like organic products, Abe's is essentially Whole Foods meets Amazon, okay? It's the leading organic, you know, yeah, it's, it's uh, cool, that's the right response. Whoa, yes! Okay, Abe's Market is the place where there are like 15,000 organic products. Um, I should figure out a way to get you guys a, uh, a discount code. If you remember my email and you send me an email, I will get you a discount code to Abe's Market, okay? So, and I'll leave business cards here, John. <laughs> Um, and it's a insanely cool. The founder sold his first company, which is called Popcorn Indiana. I don't know if any of you have ever tried that. It's like this insanely expensive popcorn. Of course, he sold it to Goldman Sachs because they'll pay the money for popcorn. Um, and uh, these guys, Jonathan Stefanski, he used to run the global infrastructure for Goldman themselves. That was a nice transition. And at uh, Akamai, and he's built something called Vubix, which is a company that allows video to become interactive. We all consume prodigious amounts of video, but we don't interact with it, right? So you like watch a video online, you don't do anything. You don't leave your email, you don't get instructions, you don't make comments or you know, rate it or something. It's not, you know, people just watch. You, know, you become, it's like some kind of robotic reaction. We become couch potatoes as soon as we see a video. Except online, you're supposed to interact. So these guys make a layer which engages the, the viewer with doing something, like leaving your email, and it's changing everything. Crosswise is doing retargeting across multiple platforms. So it's sort of annoying, but it's actually a very important part of the online advertising. Is like if you go to a website and you looked for a hotel in Cabo, and then the next thing you're doing is you're going to some gambling site and that hotel in Cabo is popping up at you, or you know, you're on ESPN and the hotel on Cabo is popping up on you. That's called retargeting. Now, today you can hide from this by going from your desktop to a cell phone or your tablet because they can't follow you. Steve's going to fix that. They're going to follow you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so anyway, VocalZoom, uh, you know, is an unbelievable company. What VocalZoom is doing is if you ever tried to use Siri in your car, and like the background noise is just insane. You're going, Siri, Siri, and you're just talking and yelling, and there's no freaking way that you can actually get, you know, instructions to this speech recognition. So what these guys do is actually use optics. They use optical technology to measure the vibrations on your face, even with your beard, okay, such that they correlate an optical signal together with the audio signal and get perfect speech recognition. And uh, they're co we're co-invested there with 3M. We've had very good luck with people investing in what are called follow-on rounds, because I mentioned the key thing is once you invest, get ready for the next round. And so you've got to be able to keep on pressing your bet. You've got to keep on investing in these entrepreneurs, because it takes a long time to get to the exit. Um, and again, we're focusing on, on what we call crowd building, to find customers distributors, partners, press, getting everybody involved in that process. We've co-invested along with, a, a, you know, I think a great list of other venture funds. People like Vinod Kosla from Kleiner Perkins, who's now got his own fund. We've done two deals with Vinod. Done a deal with Horizons Ventures, which is Lee Kashing, the wealthiest man in, in Asia today. With Excel, the guys who backed Facebook. With Index, the guys who backed Skype. We're investing together with people like GE and with 3M and Microsoft. So it's pretty cool to see them actually adopting uh, a, a very pro attitude towards crowdfunding and co-investing with us. Um, we announced a strategic relationship with General Electric where they basically are investing on the same terms as the crowd. Same deals, same price. So an individual can now invest $10,000 and get into a deal at the same basis as GE. And that's pretty cool about democratizing this whole process. Um, press has been very kind. The Street called us crowdfunding for real investors. I like that. Wall Street Journal called us a really interesting investment. Um, I like the fact that my mission is to blow up the exclusivity around tech fundraising. I like that. 
and these are some press things. Our, 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 you know, we're growing really fast. These are these data is already out of out of whack, and uh, we got good companies, really cool companies that are doing great things. And uh, I'm going to sum it up, and I'll take your questions. Basically, if I had to summarize anything to a group of entrepreneurs, it is go for it. I know it sounds trite and stupid, but your only real enemy is fear, okay? And you have nothing to fear. It's really cool building companies. It's not easy. You have to work like a dog, okay? You don't get much sleep. You don't see your wife or your girlfriend, okay? And it's not always successful, right? You fail a lot. But the joy of working with really great people and creating things that very often help people or at least create jobs I mean, I'm a sort of a traditional observer of my personal religious tradition. And uh, according to the Jewish tradition, we believe that God created the world in six days, but he didn't finish, right? In other words, the world is not finished. The world is incomplete. The world needs fixing, okay? And it's up to all of us, whatever religion or background you are, to take part in creativity. And to sit there and just be a user is stupid, okay? Be a producer, be a maker, be a creator, okay? You know, join God, okay? Which is to grow, create something beautiful and nice and give people jobs. That's what's made this country, America, so great, is people who dreamed, okay, and who, you know, took risks. And if you guys can continue to do that with Professor DeNoble and, you know, all of these great schools and get an education, I'll be happy to, you know, get lucky enough to maybe invest in the guy with the cool hair. Thank you, and I'll take your questions.